In today's episode, we're exploring an abandoned trolley car graveyard in the hills of Pennsylvania. Most of the cars date back to the 1930s and 40s, and they've been sitting in this disused rail yard since the 1990s. Although these streetcars are only in a semi-abandoned state, they've fallen victim to severe theft and vandalism. Now, we're checking them out for ourselves to see what's left. Join us as we explore. This video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. With their light, sleek, and industrial design, Ridge Wallet is redesigning the wallet experience. It holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash using either the money clip or the cash strap and comes in over 30 colors and styles, including ones made from real carbon fiber. Designed to easily fit in your front pocket and with its card optimized design, it really feels like the first wallet designed for the future. The front and back plates are even RFID blocking to protect your tap to pay cards from digital pickpocketing. The durable wallet comes with a lifetime warranty, so this could very well be the last wallet you ever purchase. And if for any reason you don't love it, it has a 45-day return policy. See how the Ridge Wallet can change your whole pocket situation by using our link ridge.com slash properpeople to get 10% off with free worldwide shipping and returns. In the 1940s, streetcars could be found in every major American city, and they were the predominant mode of public transportation. However, by the 1950s, America's obsession with the automobile was driving them out of existence. With an increasing portion of the population moving to the suburbs, there was a reduced demand on streetcar systems which primarily served the urban core. Buses were therefore more practical in serving the new sprawling cityscape due to their flexibility. Extending or creating a new route would be as simple as drawing a line on a map, rather than laying down miles of new tracks. Over the following decades, thousands of streetcars would head to the junkyard. A retired civil engineer named Ed Metka eventually took notice of this and decided to do something about these iconic machines being reduced to scrap. Beginning in the 1980s, he began purchasing old trolleys at auction with hopes of preserving them. Some have been successfully restored and others parted out to a small handful of surviving trolley lines that still run their heritage units. The majority, however, have been left to the elements and vandals. This is a SEPTA train. Yeah. We're a long ways off from Philly. I don't see trolleys. They're over there. Oh, they're back further, okay. These are pretty old looking trains. Like what decade do you suppose these are from? 60s, 70s. Because I don't think it's enough wood grain for 80s, 90s. And the exposed metal on the seats, I don't know, it just seems like 60s style. This priority seating sign looks pretty old. Pretty badly vandalized though. Some of our friends have photos from here from years ago and there wasn't an ounce of vandalism. For a while, we knew about this place for a while too, we just never made it down here. And for a while this place was kept completely off the internet and then as soon as the pictures of it started flooding the internet the vandalism picked up really quick. Brake and power. It's the only two controls you need. And of course, all of this over here. 
lights, glass light, windshield wiper headlights, horn. These have a uh, pump for stop things. These might have been street cars. They look so big to be street cars. I know. I each one them. has a control booth. They can't be street cars because what makes a street car a street car is that you can board it at street level. This is raised off the track, yeah. so you would need a platform. There's a pull to stop. I've never seen that in an actual rail car. Yeah. I mean, I guess they would skip stops if no one needed to get off. It was like a small regional train. Maybe. You can feel the switch move still. Yeah. Quite a lot of cars here. Now we're getting to some street cars. That trolley back there is really tagged up. This one's nice. It's not completely covered in graffiti. You can still see the original paint scheme of it. Everything is so curvy. These upper windows, the ceiling, the lights, all the controls. All the way from the back. This shiny, um, whatever you call this type of textured metal, that is like what, 50s? Yeah, this is definitely 50s style. Maybe even 40s though. Maybe. Because it's got that like ocean liner yeah. vibe going on with the rounded windows. And I think that was like late Art Deco streamline mm -hmm. styling. Still has the route number on it. The pantograph is hanging off over here. This one doesn't have a roof. Jeez. Holy crap. This one seems even older, but I could be wrong. The trains over here also are from Boston, so. Maybe they're just a different model. Yeah, I think that's Boston's, right? Yeah. It's a whole long line of them. This one looks in similar shape. Equally as decayed slash destroyed. This looks like the old one here. This side is actually a lot cleaner than the other side. Most of the graffiti is on the other side. Jeez. 
This train is falling apart. Wow, there's so many of them. Holy crap. I don't even know if I want to go in this one. Look at the seat material. It's like plaid. Well, this one looks like it's about ready to tip over. Yeah. The seats are a, a plaid finish. Is this the only door into it? On this side. Oh wow, they still have the uh, map of the line on here. We can find out what city it's from. Yeah, we will. This is the T also. Yeah. Penn Station. That sounds like it would be in Philadelphia and not in Boston. Yeah. Huh. Maybe it's not Boston because it says Allentown line. That's near mm -hmm. Philly. We could be completely wrong about the Boston thing. This trolley is pretty crooked. This is me holding the camera level. Watch your step. No kidding. It says P Transit on it right here. Probably Pittsburgh. The seats in this one look the cheapest out of all of them so far. Wow. New England's number one news team. We give you 105%. So now I'm thinking it is Boston. Well, these are different trains. Yeah, they're just streetcars from a lot of different cities here. The one with the map on it was not a T, didn't say T train right. on it. I it's think different these, T logo. these green T trains. They're different T logos. Are Boston. That's a different logo. Most of the trolleys here are PCC streetcars, which stands for President's Conference Committee. This committee, formed in 1929, was a group of various U.S. transit operators as well as manufacturers tasked with designing one streetcar to rule them all. The resulting design was extremely successful, and over 5,000 would be built in the 1930s and 40s. Look for ones that still have ads in them because I really want to check those out. See how old they are. This one I see an ad in. There's a curtain here that the driver can pull for more privacy. They're just collapsing in on themselves. They are. The body is on the rail. Yeah. Oh my god. Look at this one. The frame is collapsed. Yeah. The whole thing just squatted down. It's slammed. This is really a photogenic place. I didn't expect it to be this photogenic. 
if you look down this train, you can see this one's leaning to the left, and the ones behind it are leaning to the right. So there's just a whole lot of leaning going on. Damn, this one got really vandalized. Wow. Look how much these are leaning down here. I think these are the last ones. Do you think these tracks were laid down just to store these here? Because they look... They just end and they look pretty janky. Like there's so few cross ties. Damn, someone went all out with a little Halloween graffiti here. Unfortunately, over time and with the advent of social media, many people with bad intentions would find out about these trolley cars. Senseless vandals and metal thieves descended on these historic relics, reducing them to what you see now. Just a couple of months ago, the vandalism became particularly egregious when the workshop where Metka kept his most pristine trolleys was targeted. Vandals smashed windows and spray painted the trolleys inside and out, causing over $50,000 of damage. While many of the trolleys out on the rail spur were beyond repair, the ones inside his shop were likely to see life again, and this was a major setback. It's sad enough when people don't treat abandoned places with respect, but even more troubling when the work of somebody actively trying to preserve history is destroyed. PA Transit. That's what PA it is. Transit. Yeah. It. Yeah. It's a weird day. Man, if this place had no graffiti and just natural decay, it would really be one of those surreal dreamlike locations. It still is. It's just the graffiti detracts from it a little bit. This is a really old looking font. This way out, please. Step down on treadle. There's an Anbasal ad over here. Looks really faded. A what ad? An Anbasal. Never heard of that. The mouth pain medicine. Huh. Actually, that one looks kind of bent. Yeah, they all kind of look warped. <laughs> oh, it's working. As we reached the end of the line, it was time to wrap up our exploration. Even in their current state, these trolleys still hold the essence of another time. To me, physical objects and places are the most powerful link between the past and present that we have. Photographs alone can often feel so distant and unreal if there's no physical trace left to observe. Time only moves forward, and our connections to the past will only continue to erode unless we actively do something to preserve them. Thank you.